GNU Grub is a bootloader package from the GNU project. Grub is the reference implementation of the Free Software Foundation's multi-boot specification, which provides a user the choice to boot one of multiple operating systems installed on a computer or select a specific kernel configuration available on a particular operating system's partitions. GNU Grub was developed from a package called the Grand Unified Bootloader. It is predominantly used for Unix-like systems. The GNU operating system uses GNU Grub as its bootloader, as do most Linux distributions. The Solaris operating system has used Grub as its bootloader on x86 systems, starting with the Solaris 10.1-06 release. Features Users can dynamically configure the Grub subsystem. Grub loads its configuration at startup, allowing boot time changes, such as selecting different kernels or initial RAM disks. To this end, Grub provides a simple, bash-like, command-line interface, which lets users write new boot sequences on the fly, in addition to the normal menu lists. Grub is highly portable. It supports multiple executable formats and is geometry translation independent. It supports all commonly used Unix file systems, the Windows file systems FAT and NTFS, and logical block addressing. Grub allows users to view the contents of files on any supported file system. Grub can download operating system boot images from network, thus supporting diskless systems. It also supports automatic decompression of the boot images before booting them. Grub supports operating systems that do not multi-boot, by using chain loading. It uses the same two or three lines of command sequences to boot any DOS, Windows, Linux. BSD or Solaris system, making it very easy to work with it. The chain loaders for the supported Unix-like OSes are built into Grub. Grub can be used with a variety of user interfaces. Most Linux distributions take advantage of Grub's support for a graphical interface to provide a customized boot menu with a background image. A modification of Grub's text interface can use a serial link so that a remote terminal can have access to the bootloader. Grub uses a scrollable screen for operating system boot selection. This means 150 or more boot choices can be easily controlled by Grub by adding them to the Grub CFG configuration file. The arrow keys are used to select which operating system to boot. In addition to the normal menu interface, Grub also provides a bash-like terminal command prompt that provides a rich set of commands to allow a user to view or alter any part of the boot process. With these tools one can, without prior knowledge of what is installed on a computer, use Grub from an external device such as a floppy disk, USB device or a CD-ROM to boot up an installed operating system. Operation Booting When a computer is turned on, the computer's BIOS finds the configured primary bootable device and loads and executes the initial bootstrap program from the master boot record. The MBR is the first sector of the hard disk, with zero as its physical offset. For a long time, the size of a sector has been 512 bytes, but since 2009 there are hard disks available with a sector size of 4096 bytes, called advanced format disks. As of October 2013, such hard disks are still accessed in 512 byte sectors, by utilizing the 512E emulation. The legacy MBR partition table supports a maximum of four partitions and occupies 64 bytes. Together with the optional disk signature and disk timestamp, this leaves between 434 and 446 bytes available for the machine code of a bootloader. Although such a small space can be totally sufficient for very simple bootloaders, it is not big enough to contain a bootloader supporting complex and multiple file systems menu-driven selection of boot choices etc. Bootloaders with bigger footprints are thus split into pieces, where the smallest piece fits into and resides within the MBR, while larger piece, S, are stored in other locations and invoked by the bootloader's MBR code. Operating system kernel images are in most cases files residing on appropriate file systems, but the concept of a file system is unknown to the BIOS. Thus, in BIOS-based systems, the duty of a bootloader is to access content of those files, so it can be read from the hard disk, loaded into the RAM and executed. 
One of the possible approaches for bootloaders is to load the kernel images by directly accessing hard disk sectors occupied by the actual kernel image, without understanding the underlying file system. Usually, additional level of indirection is required, in form of maps or map files or Euro auxiliary files that contain a list of physical sectors occupied by kernel images, thus providing information to the bootloader about where to find the kernel image's underlying sectors. Such maps need to be updated each time a kernel image changes its physical location on disk, due to installing new kernel images, file system defragmentation etc. Also, in case of the maps changing their physical location, their locations need to be updated within the bootloader's MBR code, so the sector's indirection mechanism continues to work. This is not only cumbersome, but it also leaves the system in need of manual repairs in case something goes wrong during system updates. Another approach is to make a bootloader aware of the underlying file systems, so kernel images are configured and accessed using their actual file paths. That requires a bootloader to contain a file system driver for each of the supported file systems, so they can be understood and accessed by the bootloader itself. This approach eliminates the need for hard-coded locations of hard disk sectors and existence of map files, and does not require MBR updates after the kernel images are added or moved around. Configuration of a bootloader is stored in a regular file, which is also accessed in a file system aware way to obtain boot configurations before the actual booting of any kernel images. As a result, the possibility for things to go wrong during various system updates is significantly reduced. As a downside, such bootloaders have increased internal complexity and even bigger footprints. GNU Grub uses the second approach, by understanding the underlying file systems. The bootloader itself is split into multiple stages, allowing for itself to fit within the MBR boot scheme. Two major versions of Grub are in common use. Grub version 2, called Grub 2, was written from scratch and intended to replace its predecessor Grub version 1 and it is now used by a majority of Linux distributions. Grub version 1, called Grub Legacy, is only prevalent in older releases of Linux distributions, among which some are still in use and supported, for example in Ubuntu 10.04 or CentOS 5. Grub version 1, the master boot record usually contains Grub stage 1, but can contain another bootloader which can chain boot grub stage 1 from another boot sector such as a partitions volume boot record. Given the small size of a boot sector, stage 1 can do little more than load the next stage of grub by loading a few disk sectors from a fixed location near the start of the disk. Stage 1 can load the stage 2 directly, but it is normally set up to load the stage 1.5. Grub stage 1.5 is located in the first 30 KIB of hard disk immediately following the MBR and before the first partition. In case this space is not available the install of stage 1.5 will fail. The stage 1.5 image contains file system drivers. This enables the stage 1.5 to directly load stage 2 from any known location in the file system, for example from Grub. Stage 2 will then load the default configuration file and any other modules needed. Grub version 2. Stage 1, boot IMG is stored in the master boot record, or optionally in any of the volume boot records, and addresses the next stage by an LBA48 address. At installation time it is configured to load the first sector of core IMG. Stage 1.5 Core IMG is by default written to the sectors between the MBR and the first partition, when these sectors are free and available. For legacy reasons, the first partition of a hard drive does not begin at sector 1 but at sector 63, leaving a gap of 62 sectors of empty space. That space is not part of any partition or file system, and therefore not prone to any problems related with it. Once executed, Core IMG will load its configuration file and any other modules needed, particularly file system drivers. At installation time, it is generated from disk boot IMG and configured to load the stage 2 by its file path. Stage 2, files belonging to the stage 2 are all being held in the grub directory, which is a subdirectory of the slash boot directory specified by the file system hierarchy standard. Once grub stage 2 has loaded, 
It presents a TUI-based operating system selection menu, where the user can select which operating system to boot. Grub can be configured to automatically load a specified kernel after a user-defined timeout. If files or the partition become unavailable, or if the user wishes to take direct control, Stage 2 will drop the user to the grub command prompt, where the user can then manually specify the boot parameters. In the operating system selection menu grub accepts a couple of commands. By pressing E, it is possible to edit parameters for the selected operating system before the operating system is started. Typically, this is used to change kernel parameters for a Linux system. The reason for doing this in grub can be an emergency case, the system has failed to boot. Using the kernel parameters line it is possible, among other things, to specify a module to be disabled for the kernel. This could be required if the specific kernel module is broken and thus prevents boot up. For example, to blacklist the kernel module NVIDIA current, append mod pro blacklist equals NVIDIA current at the end of the kernel parameters. By pressing C, the user enters the grub command line. The grub command line is not a regular Linux shell, like for example bash, and accepts only certain grub specific commands, documented by various Linux distributions. Once boot options have been selected, grub loads the selected kernel into memory and passes control to the kernel. Alternatively, grub can pass control of the boot process to another bootloader, using chain loading. This is the method used to load operating systems such as Microsoft Windows, that do not support the multi-boot specification or are not supported directly by Grub. If the usage of dmcrypt is intended, the contents of slash boot, that is Grub, the Linux kernel and Inlet RAMFs respectively INITRD need to be on a distinct non-encrypted partition, because the logic to handle encrypted partitions resides inside the Linux kernel. Installation the GNU Grub software package contains several executable files, Grub Setup, 8, Grub Install, 8, is a script file that will execute following tasks, create the directory Grub if it does not exist, generate the file core IMG or respectively Grub EFI, write boot IMG to either the MBR or volume boot record, as specified in a command line option, Write core IMG into space between the MBR and first partition or respectively copy grub EFI to the EFI system partition. Grub config 8 is a utility used to generate a new grub CFG file. Update grub 8 is a stub used for running grub config o grub grub CFG. Grub can be installed on removable media, such as an optical drive, floppy disk or USB flash drive in order to bring up a system that may not have or cannot boot from a hard disk. Adoption The majority of Linux distributions adopted GNU Grub 2. Another notable example is the Sony's PlayStation 4, which also uses GNU Grub. History Grub was initially developed by Eric Bollian as part of work on booting the operating system GNU Herd, developed by the Free Software Foundation. In 1999, Gordon Matsijkite and Yoshio Nori Kajai made Grub an official software package of the GNU project and opened the development process to the public. Development Grub version 1 is no longer under development and is being phased out. The GNU Grub developers have switched their focus to Gruber 2, a complete rewrite with goals including making GNU Grub cleaner, more robust, more portable and more powerful. Gruber 2 started under the name Pupa Pupa was supported by the Information Technology Promotion Agency in Japan. Pupa was integrated into Gruber 2 development around 2002, when Grub version 0.9x was renamed Grub Legacy. Some of the goals of the Gruber 2 project include support for non-x86 platforms, internationalization localization, non-ASCII characters, dynamic modules, memory management, a scripting mini language, migrating platform specific code to platform specific modules, and an object oriented framework. Three of the most widely used Linux distributions use Gruber 2 as their mainstream bootloader. Ubuntu adopted Gruber 2 as the default bootloader in its 9.10 version of October 2009. Fedora has been using Gruber 2 as its default bootloader since Fedora 16 released in November 2011. 
OpenSUSE adopted Gruber 2 as the default bootloader with its 12.2 release of September 2012. GNU Grub version 2.00 was officially released on June 26, 2012. Variants GNU Grub is free and open source software, so several variants have been created. Some notables 1, which have not been merged into Grub mainline, Open Solaris includes a modified Grub legacy that supports BSD disk labels, automatic 64-bit kernel selection, and booting from ZFS. The Syllable project made a modified version of Grub to load the system from its 8th OS file system. Utilities, Grub configuration tools. The setup tools in use by various distributions often include modules to set up Grub, for example, UST2 on SUSE OpenSUSE distributions and Nanaconda on Fedora RHEL distributions. Startup Manager and Grub Customizer are graphical configuration editor for Debian-based distributions of Grub. For Gruber 2 there are KDE control modules. GRLDRICE is a tiny tool for modifying the default configuration of GRLDR file for GOUB4 DOS. Other utilities Grub Utilities is a collection of multi platform utilities for Grub Legacy, Gruber 2, and Grub for DOS. Boot Repair is a simple graphical tool for recovering from frequent boot related problems with Grub and Microsoft Windows Boot Loader. This application is available under GNU GPL license. Boot Repair can repair Grub on multiple Linux distributions, including, but not limited to, Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, OpenSUSE and Arch Linux and will be included in the future versions of Ubuntu. See also Comparison of bootloaders, NTLDR, Master Boot Record, GUID Partition Table, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, References External links, Brady Pennsylvania Drake Details of Grub on the PC Pixelbeat.org Retrieved November 22, 2006 A, Okujai Yoshinori. GNUGrubnew.org. Retrieved November 29, 2007. A, official GNU Grub Project. Official GNU Grub Manual. Gruber 2 Homepage. Official Help Grub Email List. Documentation for Forks. GOUB2 Win. GOUB4 DOS A Euro Manual. Wiki. Guide. And Forum. Super Grub Disk A Euro Wiki. Lilo and Grub. Bootloaders made simple by Judith Myerson, booting Linux on x86 using Grub 2, boot with Grub, Linux Journal a Euro a good tutorial.